Let's uh, move into some fun shark stuff. I have fan questions that instead of me answering, I ask a shark expert to... I'm sorry, that's a dirty word. Yeah. I don't like to use that word. Um, how should I refer to you? Shark researcher? I'm just a biologist. A biologist um, with a name in the shark world. Is it fair to call the tiger shark the trash can of the ocean? <laughs> um, in a way, yes. I, I, I would call it an indiscriminate feeder. A little more politically correct. Yeah, yeah. I mean, they, they have an unbelievable breadth to their diet. So um, true opportunist, right? And what we noticed from looking at tiger shark diets in Hawaii was little tiger sharks eat little things. And what most animals do as they get bigger and they can feed on bigger things, they shift to bigger things. Mm -hmm. Tiger sharks don't do that. Tiger sharks just add new things to their diet. They still eat little things. So you can have a 14 foot tiger shark that will have a belly full of puffer fish this big. Uh -huh. So. And this, do they know if their stomachs are more equipped to digest a wide range of things? Well, I mean, having dissected a bunch of different species of sharks and looked in the stomachs, uh, tiger sharks definitely have a pretty substantial digestive tract. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's pretty muscular, it's pretty tough. Um, we found stingray spines in the livers. So that spine has gone all the way through the stomach and, and embedded itself in the liver. So that's not uncommon. Hooks, you know, all sorts of things. They're living through it. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Hardy animals. Hardy animals. I mean, they eat porcupine fish. And yet, um, they're having a problem with the gray nurse sharks on the east coast of Australia from too many hooks and them actually getting infected. Yep. And that's a difference in those two animals' abilities to deal with things? Sure. Sure. And probably differences in diet, right? So coming back to your digestive tract um, suitability, tiger sharks probably have been eating a wide range of things for a very long time. And evolutionarily are more suited for that kind of diet, right? So it could be expected to find a wide range of things in their stomachs that they're trying, such as, say, dive equipment. Doesn't mean they ate a diver, but they're likely to have just tried to eat it. Well, one of the things we found from historic um, stomach content data from tiger sharks and why was typically when you found human trash, so clothing, cans, things like that, you also found human food scraps. And what we think were happening is people were throwing entire bags of trash over the side and the shark eats the whole bag. Mm. So the reason why they're eating the bag isn't because they like to eat bags of trash. They're eating the bag because there's food scraps that they can smell in the bag. So I think that that human garbage, the shark garbage can thing, really comes from the fact that they'll eat trash, wanting the food scraps that are associated with it, not just for the sake of eating trash. Good answer. Good answer. Why do sharks among fish have multiple gill slits where a lot of fish just have one big plate? Um, well, that, those are always really good questions. Kids ask those questions all the time. So um, evolutionarily, when you go back and you look at what we think are the predecessors of sharks, um, they all had gill slits, right? So the operculum, as we call it, the, the big garage door that opens and closes in the, in the bony fish that enable them to breathe, um, that is a more derived feature. That's an evolutionarily derived feature. Hmm. And um, the more primitive species, like uh, hagfish and things like that, all have gill slits. So it's thought that the predecessors all had those slits. They didn't have that kind of um, advanced skull mechanisms. And in addition, you got to remember, so bony fish that have the garage doors have, in some cases, 42 bones in their skull. Wow. So those bones, all those bones in the skull, make the, the mouth very flexible. So you can use that to increase the volume to pull water in, in across your gills. So you can be in, in hypoxic conditions, water that has very little oxygen. And by having a big volume, by sucking in a big volume, you can get enough oxygen across your gills to breathe. Um, or you can eat really big things, or you can suction feed things. So evolutionarily, the reason why all bony fish have such, you know, opercula, and the opercula are not just a flat plate, it actually bends and can cup to increase the volume. But sharks just have a cartilaginous skeleton. So they don't have all those features to increase the size of their mouth. They can protrude their jaws forward, but they lack many of the pieces needed 
to structurally change the volume of the mouth. Yet they must not need it, otherwise yeah. they would have changed, right? No, of course not. Yeah, they're still around. Right. Is it fair to say that when you look at a fish with gill slits, that that is an indication that it is an older species of animal? Typically, that's a, a, that's a more primitive structure. Mm -hmm. Most northern found shark. Is it the Greenland shark? Uh, yep, so Greenland sharks, the uh, Pacific sleepers can move into Arctic and Antarctic waters. Um, those are probably your northern most latitude species, at least the sizable ones. Deepest depth. Is that also a sleeper shark? No, no, there's some cat sharks. Um, I, I, I don't know my deep water sharks very well. Um, but there are a couple deep water cat sharks and a Prostura species that, that can be found in very deep water. But interestingly enough, um, chondrichthians as a whole, those are the cartilaginous fishes, typically don't occupy the deepest parts of the ocean as much as some of the teleos fish, the bony fish do. Oh, right. Is, yeah, interesting. 